we receive support from the pet care information and advisory service to undergo peer review to develop a professional manual of standards and a website pet care became interested in the australian association of pet dog breeders as we call ourselves because they wish to see the development of responsible and ethical options for puppy buyers who may not want to own a pedigree dog the aapdb hopes to represent any breeder who wants to breed dogs as life enhancing companions for people we don't want to breed perfect dogs for their own sake. We want to breed them to be healthy, friendly, reliable family companions. We'd like to attract pure breeders, cross breeders, and breeders developing new breeds. The AAPDB has independently addressed most of the issues raised in the RSPCA's position paper, Key Principles for Responsible Companion Animal Breeding. And we're confident that our standards will show that it's possible to breed dogs profitably and professionally and at the same time maintain a commitment to animal welfare and to take long-term responsibility for the animals bred. <coughs> Members of the AAPDB must abide by our code of ethics and must meet standards which will be confirmed on inspection before they gain full membership. We've outlined six objectives of the organisation. They are to promote and improve the availability of healthy, reliable, well-socialised pet dogs to promote and raise the standards of welfare of breeding dogs, to encourage responsible pet ownership, to maintain a voluntary database of owners in order to promote activities and social interaction between owners, to maintain a database of breeders and dogs in order to monitor welfare and to promote communication and education between breeders, and finally to support the research into behaviour and genetic health of pet dogs. For the rest of these, this presentation, I'll discuss these objectives and how I believe that an organisation like this can work to improve animal health and welfare. Sorry that I'm reading this. I can't do it any other way. The first objective of the AAPDB is to promote and improve the availability of healthy, reliable, well-socialised pets. To breed healthy dogs, breeders have to pay attention to nutrition and hygiene of the bitch and the pups, and they have to take sure that, make sure that preventative health measure, measures are undertaken. This is the easy part, and it's not hard to develop health and management protocols which are outlined in our manual. Adequate socialisation to eight weeks of age is also relatively easy to ensure. Each puppy should be handled daily from birth. If they are kept beyond eight weeks, they should be lived in close association with people throughout the socialisation period and should not be kept in kennels with only dogs for company. The more challenging issues involve making sure of the genetic health and reliable temperament of the dogs we breed. Breed specific single gene defects and structural problems like hip dysplasia can be screened for, but this doesn't address the issues raised by earlier speakers, such as breeding for conformation rather than temperament, conformational problems arising from breed standards, or the loss of vigour produced by founder effect and generations of line breeding. Obviously, my bias is towards crossbreeding for pets so that one can take advantage of hybrid vigour and complementarity between breeds. Parent dogs need to be selected for health and temperament and screened for disorder, disorders common to both breeds. But otherwise, sensible crossbreeding can provide a quick fix to many of the problems for pet breeders and pet owners. But what about the purebreds? And what about the people who want to breed Sharpays or British Bulldogs, where the breed standards are clearly contrary to animal welfare? Should some breeds not be bred? Can we maintain these strange and exotic breeds, perhaps in less extreme forms? Or do we want to see a world where all pet dogs are a generic crossbred like the Isa Brown Chook? Personally, I think it would be a much less interesting world if a wide range of purebred dogs that have been developed were allowed to become extinct. The world is full of dogs that I would never own or want to breed but which their owners love. So I believe that it's very, di very difficult to dictate what an owner can or cannot breed. Beyond requiring that health and temperament be paramount, screening for common disorders, keeping gene pools open and limiting inbreeding, I believe that the most effective way of promoting animal health and, and temperament is to, assist, sorry, to insist that breeders accept a lifetime responsibility for the animals they breed. If you're, obliged, if you're obliged to rehome a dog you breed at any time of its life, you'll take a great deal of effort to ensure that the pup you breed is suitable for the people that you've sold it to. If you have to give a refund if it develops a single gene or conformational disorder, 
It's a very powerful disincentive to breeding puppies with those disorders. If the dog you breed becomes neurotic or aggressive and the owners can't handle it and send it back to you, you will take a lot more care that the pups you breed come from stable, calm, non-aggressive dogs. Our breeders will be required to rehome the dogs they've bred at any time and to state whether refunds will be offered for health problems and under what circumstances. A new owner must be aware of what conditions apply if their animals develop a recognised disorder. Ideally, I would like to make full refunds for recognised disorders mandatory without requiring the return of the dog, but that may require better information about disease incidents and a means of avoiding problems and may be a step too far at this stage of our association's development. More evidence-based research would help. Having an owners forum on our website will help to ensure that our breeders are kept honest and they're in their dealings with their owners. The second objective is to promote and raise the standard of welfare of breeding dogs. For me, this is the most important role of the AAPDB at this stage of its development, to address the issues raised by the RSPCA in their comments on puppy farms by having a strong code of practice and mandatory inspection of premises prior to full membership being granted. As far as husbandry is concerned, some rules are easy. Dogs should be groomed, treated for parasites, maintained in condition score three. No dogs in cages except for transport. No dogs in individual pens except for short periods and specific reasons such as illness or mating. But what is the ideal husbandry system? That is a system that is both uncompromising with regard to the dog's welfare and also economically sustainable. What we have said to that is that dogs should live in stable social groups of no more than four bitches. Why? I'm afraid the answer to that is because that's what I do. Is there a better way of working out the ideal husbandry method? Almost certainly. And since the AAPDB is a work in progress, we look forward to the research that tells us what the ideal system is. In the meantime, we require that dogs should have appropriately sized yards of two to four bitches with a view of the surroundings, a draft proof shelter, plenty of shade and water and a trough from the, for the hot weather. For small breeders, a backyard would do this and for, for, and for breeders with more dogs, each yard should try to replicate that backyard situation. The frequency of breeding is a welfare issue and breeding on success, successive heats is regarded as inhumane and at least in New South Wales is prohibited unless with written authority of a veterinarian. However, my reproduction lecturer, Pat Wright, told us 28 years ago that there's no veterinary reason for mis missing breeding cycles, and I've seen nothing to alter this advice since. It's an inefficient way of limiting breeding and results in valuable bitches being kept in kennels well into middle age. We can't override state regulations, but our position is that overuse of bitches should be addressed by putting a limit on the number of litters she can breed or by setting a mandatory retirement age, or both. Again, this is only a matter of opinion, and I don't know of any research into the ideal age for retirement or the effects of repeated breeding on bitch health. We've set seven years or seven litters, whichever comes first. But given that the RSPCA position is six litters, we may reconsider this. Some evidence-based research would be good. Euthanizing retired breeding dogs, once they're no longer useful, devalues the life of the breeding dog into a puppy machine is clearly unacceptable. Our position is that breeding dogs must be socialised so that they can be desexed and rehomed on retirement in middle age. Euthanasia is only acceptable under veterinary supervision for intractable health or behavioural problems. <clears throat> Our third objective is to encourage responsible pet ownership. This is fairly straightforward. Our members must provide written information for owners on feeding and training, and they will be expected to assure themselves of the suitability of a new home. We will provide a manual for new owners, an appropriate question to sheet to fill out for each new owner. This is probably the point at which I should raise the vexed issue of pet stores. The AAPDB permits sale of pups through stores which meet the Pet Industry Association husbandry standards and which accept post-sale responsibilities required by the AAPDB. This includes issues relating to impulse buying, owner education, post-sale illnesses, rehoming, desexing and recording. We hope to develop a list of cooperating stores and provide a means of communication via our, pet, our website. Pet store puppies, no, pet, sorry, pet stores buy puppies at a greatly reduced price and the pet store sales are extremely pet dog sales are extremely profitable for pet stores. We believe that because of this, they must take on the duty of care that would otherwise be the responsibility of the breeder. 
Most people in the welfare industry oppose sales to pet stores, and it may be that we will lose support and members because of our position. But at this stage, we want to be as inclusive as possible.